like most European nations, Belgium was licking its wounds and rebuilding the country following the end of the First World War. During that time, the airplane had evolved from fragile looking motorized box kite designs, like the Voisins and the Farmans, to the more reliable and more advanced machines like the Sopwith Camel and the Fokker D7. The setting up of an own indigenous aviation industry became a top priority, and the 1920s saw the birth of the Belgian aviation industry, with the rise of companies such as Sapka, RSV, Akaz, and many other smaller firms. Today, we are looking at the Akaz company. Akaz, which stands for Atelier de Construction Aeronautique Zeebrugge, was a small company founded in 1923 by Fernand Jacquet, a Belgian World War I ace who shot down seven enemy aircraft during the war. Co-founders and main investors in the company were two well-known Belgian industrialists, Alfred François Feyens and Jules Frater. The company name Akaz didn't become official until 1924. As the startup budget they had was limited, they did not have a factory that was based near or at an airport. Instead, its assembly hall was a hangar at the Zeebrugge Harbour in West Flanders, near the fishery docks. The workforce consisted largely out of local fishermen and a handful of aircraft mechanics coming from Ostende. To design its first aircraft, that job fell into the hands of a team of two young designers. Emile Allard and Alfred Renard. The latter would later become one of the most famous Belgian aircraft designers in history, as noted in a previous video I did on the Renard R35. The company's first aircraft, the Akaz T1, was a two-seat all-metal touring monoplane with a thick profile cantilever high wing which could be detached to make it easier for transport by road. It was also the first Belgian-built aircraft of all-metal construction. It was powered by a 6-cylinder Anzani 6 radial engine, producing about 70 horsepower, giving it a top speed of 160 km per hour, or 99 miles per hour, and had an endurance of about 3.5 hours. In early 1924, the T1, registered OBAFK, was moved out of the workshop and moved by road to Ostende Steen Airfield for its first flight. The maiden flight went off without any problems and the aircraft was reported to handle quite well. Flight trials went on until the 21st of June 1924, when the T-1 was flown from Knokkelerzoete Airport to Brussels to take part in the touring aircraft contest. But visibility on site was poor due to low hanging clouds. Upon arrival, during landing, the aircraft collided with a tree and crashed. Luckily, the crew survived the accident, but the aircraft was destroyed. But this setback didn't keep a cars from building aircraft. At the time of the T1's crash, they were already working on an improved version, the Akaz T2. This aircraft was, in terms of looks and performance, similar to the T1, but it had a redesigned and more aerodynamic tail section, and was first flown in mid-July 1924, just a few weeks after the loss of the T1. But it only received its Belgian aviation registration. OBAFM in December of that year. It kept flying in 1929 and was re-registered as OOAFM and kept that registration until 1933 when the aircraft vanished into history and hasn't been seen since. As the T2 entered test flying, design work was already largely completed for the Akaz T3, an even further improved version of the T1 and T2. But this aircraft never made it into production. Although both aircraft were proven to be good and reliable, there were no orders for the types and no other aircraft were built beyond the two prototypes. In 1926, after a meeting with Akaz's investors, the company name was to be changed to Zako, which stood for Zebrehe Aeronautical Construction Company, much to the discontent of Jacquet, who removed himself from the company the leadership was then taken over by the company's co-founders, Alfred François Feyens and Jules Frater. But the aircraft that were built would still remain with the Akaz name. With no more aircraft being built and sold, the company was desperate for money. Since the civilian aviation market turned out to be a bust, they settled their focus on the military needs. In 1925, 
work started on an aircraft for the Belgian Aeronautique Militaire. Designing the aircraft was tasked to Zakko's new chief designer, Alfred Hermann. The aircraft was for a two-seat biplane fighter that was to be made out of dual aluminium. This became the Akaz C2. A future reconnaissance version was to be designated as the Akaz A2. A unique feature of the aircraft was that the upper wing and lower wing had the same wingspan, and all four outer wing assemblies were exactly the same, making it easier to assemble and disassemble for transport by road. It didn't matter if you put the top starboard wing on the lower port side wing or the other way around, they were all the same. In June 1926, the prototype of the C2 was rolled out and ready to make its first flight. It was a two-seat fighter aircraft with the pilot sitting in the front seat and the navigator rear gunner in the back. Its armament consisted of a single synchronized Vickers .303 machine gun in the front of the pilots and two .303 Lewis machine guns in the rear gunner station. The Akar C2 had a length of 8.25 meters and a wingspan of 12.5 meters, with a wing area of 40.5 square meters. Its empty weight was around 1,260 kilograms and a maximum takeoff weight of about 2,070 kilograms. It was powered by a Hispano Suiza i2.GA engine, producing 450 horsepower, giving it a top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. It had a range of 875 kilometers, quite impressive for an aircraft of its size for those days, and could reach an altitude of 7,500 meters. In 1927, the military evaluated the C-2 and even though they were very impressed with the aircraft's performance and initially showed interest, but due to political and economical reasons, it was decided not to buy the aircraft. The aeronautic was already committed to the Breguet 19, which entered service two years earlier and was already being built under license by Sapka. At the time, it looked like the C-2's fate was sealed and it was likely to be heading for the scrap heap. But then, in the final months of 1927, the aircraft got one more shot at redemption. Edmond Thieffry, another Belgian ace of World War I fame with no less than 10 enemy aircraft on its count, was looking at performing an expeditionary flight from Brussels to Leopoldville in the Belgian Congo. And the capabilities and long-range performance of the Akar C2 was seen as the ideal aircraft for the job. The aircraft underwent a number of modifications and entered the civilian register as OBAFX. Changes included a new 600 horsepower Hispano Suiza engine, additional fuel and oil tanks that extended the aircraft's range to 3,000 kilometers. The gunner station was modified to house an extra passenger, and room was made beneath the belly of the aircraft to carry a spare propeller. With all these changes, the weight increased to 3,200 kilograms and the fuselage and wings had to be reinforced. On the 9th of March 1928, the aircraft was ready for its record-breaking flight and it was christened as the Princess Astrid. The aircraft took off on its first leg on its journey to the African colony. Unfortunately, the aircraft suffered an engine failure and had to make an emergency landing at Philippeville in southern Belgium. However, the aircraft made a hard landing and suffered significant damage Luckily, Thierry Fri and his two crew members, Joseph Lang and Philippe Cressin, managed to escape unhurt. Despite the damage, the aircraft was repaired and Thierry and his crew wanted to undertake a second attempt, but the landing gear had to be reinforced. But the C-2 never flew again, and in 1933 the aircraft was stricken off the register and was eventually scrapped. After the C-2, no other Akaz aircraft ever left the Zakko assembly hall. And in 1929, in the wake of the Great Depression, the company filed for bankruptcy and closed its doors. Both the C-2 and the T-2 aircraft were transferred to and managed by Sega. And no, that's not the Japanese video game company I'm referring to. Sega, or Société d'Entreprise Générale Aeronautique, took over all papers, tools and activities that were property of Zakko. In exchange, the company investors received 625 shares in Sega, that in 1931 was taken over by the British Ferry Aviation Company and became its Belgian subsidiary 
renamed and known as Avion Ferry. And so ends the story of the Akaz Company, a company that, in its short existence, built some remarkable and reliable aircraft, but due to circumstances and stroke of bad luck, never gotten the success and the fame they deserved, being overshadowed by the bigger state-owned companies.